Hey guys, thanks for coming in for a video. I hope you're all doing well. I thought I would do kind of an impromptu question and answer and then we're going to open a jewelry jar as I promised in the intro. We're going to do it up close like this because I uh, I miss kind of seeing y'all face to face and I get tired of looking at just my hands. <laughs> and I know you can see the jewelry a lot better up close and personal, but I've got plenty of those kind of videos in the bank for you. I'm editing one that's super long. It must be 50 minutes long. So I do want to kind of reduce it a little bit so it's not too tedious with untangling everything. But I also wanted to answer some questions. Remember I told you last time that I was going to be doing my Q&A lives now because I think people find it a little bit difficult to leave the question in an old video and then come back to leave another one or look at the answer or whatever. And I try not to, and then I think a lot of people want instant gratification and want the questions answered as soon as they ask them. So I thought that's what I would do today is do an open Q&A. Here you can ask me anything about reselling or whatnot, you know, as long as it's not out of bounds or anything. So um, I'm hoping that I sound okay. I already muted it so, um, so we don't get an echo. So let me know how I sound. Again, if you're new to the channel, we do talk a lot about jewelry here, but we also talk about luxury items, reselling and buying luxury items. I love to do handbags. That's one of my other um, kind of passions and interest is handbags especially luxury handbags so if that's your thing be sure and click the subscribe button be sure and hit the bell so that you can be notified when i go live or when i upload a new video because i'm a full-time school teacher but i'm also a full-time reseller because believe me i put in probably more hours into my ebay poshmark amazon and all of that than i sometimes do in my other work but um if you're interested in that kind of thing, be sure and subscribe, be sure and hit that bell. And uh, that way you'll be notified when I do go live or put in a new video. And I will be going back to work Thursday. So I may be a little bit sporadic with my live videos. So it's really important that you get that notification. I may be doing it possibly only weekends or maybe Friday evenings or something like that. Yeah, we'll see. It looks like 15 or people are here. Let me open the other. Let me open the chat if I could. Over here. Let me see here. Oh, there you are. Okay, I'm going to open another window here and see if I can get everybody on the chat. Be sure and say hello. Let me know how I sound as well and how the stream is going. We do have some storms going on right now. So um, I'm hoping the sound is good and everything. Let me say hello to some people in the chat real quick. We have Barb going on Grumpy. We have Swamp Picker. Those two are not only extraordinary you YouTubers, they also resell. So if you want to learn anything about reselling, go check their channels out. She Rokokis is here. Carla, did you take the day off or what day is it today? I'm glad you're here, Miss Princess Casserole. She's also got a great channel, been taking us to a lot of uh, field trips as well, ride along. So really enjoy watching her as well. All right, so a couple of tips and questions that I want to open up with, and maybe you can generate some questions for me. If not, we'll just go straight to open a jewelry jar. Oh, let me show you real quick what I forgot to show you from the last jewelry jar, guys. This little droplet came out. I didn't even see it. Every time I go back and look at my table after I've opened a jar, I find something. Look at that little pave rhinestone, kind of a pear-shaped drop. Isn't that cute? I love that. I mean, it is really pretty. That would look nice on a lot on a nice long chain. Uh, you are off already. Well, good. It is what? How, what's the time zone over there in Buffalo, New York? You're a, an hour ahead. That's why, right? Right? Yeah, we're still around four o'clock right here in Texas. And Miss Chris is here as well. And M's videos or vids eight. Thank you. I'm glad it sounds good. Let me know though, because like I said, we are having some thunderstorms around here. Uh, I wanted to talk to you really quickly, guys, because I've seen a lot of people, and I do the same thing. I'm in a rush. I take bad pictures. I try to, especially when I'm in that listing challenge on Sundays. <laughs> I take bad pictures, and I usually go back and fix them. Uh, the frugal gal is here as well. Great to see you. And I go back and recheck them because many times we rush through them. And, uh, oh, if you do have a question, guys, put it in caps or put the question marks before and after. 
I'll go back and read not so much my own listings. I really am really kind of a wordsmith and I like to make sure the words are good, but the pictures can definitely be bad. I'm definitely guilty of it or I misspell things in the title. And I wonder how did that sell or why did it take so long to sell? Because I misspelled something in the title and I don't know how they found out it was a shirt and not a, you know, shark or something because I misspell things all the time. So I do go back and check, but I'm talking about people that play down their item. I just don't get it. They, um, instead of lauding its properties, they tell you every flaw first. Don't do that. Don't do that to your item. You want the people that are looking at your item to see the good thing first, always. And I never show, like if there's a flaw, I never show it second picture. I show it last picture and I do it in my description as well. I will tell them in my description, be sure and check, pick number five. There's a scratch on the on the shoe or something, but I'll never bring it up right there and then. And I learned as a an autism therapist, we used to have to do reports for the parents and they had this thing called the sandwich. And that was always when we walked the children to their cars, you know, that we were required to tell them how the day went to the parents. So we would say things like, oh, it was great today. He ate all his lunch. He spoke so many words and he communicated this and that. And then we'd sandwich in the bad stuff. He pulled everyone's hair. He spit on the floor. He flopped all day. But, you know, then we sandwich it with something good. But we're really working on it. And he, he responded to redirection. That's the way I want you to look at your listings. Sandwich the good and good with the bad in the middle. Okay, don't make that your highlight. Because I really think you play down your items that way. Because I know when I've gone to like Macari and something, the first thing I see is the picture of the flaw. I keep going. I don't want to see the picture of the flaw right away. Maybe I'll, you know, I'll think it's not that bad if I see how, what a great price it is. Or maybe it's the color of a, of a bag that I've been wanting. Maybe the strap needs to be repaired. But, you know, I've already gotten like vested into it and I really want it. Then I'll see the flaw. So I just want you to keep that in mind. when you're listing um again that's something i really really work hard at is the words because not everyone reads the description you're right not everyone reads the description but a lot of people do and they really want they want a story with it they want you to sell it to them they're you know they're online shopping they may have already spent too much money but if you play it up nice and pretty they're going to want that item so you really have to learn to appreciate your own item and if you say things like well it's really worn uh, very well worn don't say that say signs of use don't even use the word worn i don't even like to use that word i use the word use or pre-owned instead of used pre-owned or i'll say things like very and i don't and i'm not afraid of using the word very good or even excellent if i believe that's the case if i'm not going to represent it in any way and if you know no flaws or anything like that but i'll say things like very good vintage pre-owned condition and then i'll name the flaws and then i'll even put like a little dash and put all of the little things that could be that you would notice in a pre-owned let's say piece of jewelry it's going to have some dings may have some scratches may have some wear so forth and so on but i've already told you all the wonderful things here and then i'm going to tell you all the wonderful things as well right after i tell you all the flaws i'm going to tell you what a stunning piece it is i'm going to tell you how sought after how rare it is so that's what i want i want you to take away today is to not discount your items. Always, always laud them. Always sandwich the flaw with something good and something good again. And then just kind of put that, you know, that flaw in between. Also the free shipping. I love to add that. If I'm doing free shipping, I put it in caps at the end of my listing. Free shipping today. Uh, if it's a rare piece, I put that at the end as well. And I always like to use that phrase. What is my favorite? Uh, the integrity of the piece is not compromised in any way. And I really think that helps. So that's just my little spiel on, on listing in words. And then with your pictures, I think I've mentioned this before in my other Poshmark videos, because I've been doing Poshmark for about four years, um, is to, if you're going to list a handbag, please put something in it. Please don't throw the handbag on the floor. Please don't put it like an old sweater that you tossed off and needs to be thrown in the laundry. Nobody wants that bag. Put some paper or put it in there. Take that pretty picture so that they can see 
the profile of the picture. They can see the silhouette of the, not the picture, of the purse. They can see the silhouette of it. They can see how it looks when you put it on a table. Hang it on a hook. Get yourself an armor and hang it on that little knob. Don't put your items on the floor. You are devaluating your items. And no one even wants to give you $20 for it if you threw it on the floor. That's my never to be humble opinion. Let me see what's going on in the chat, guys. And then we'll talk a little bit more about other stuff. Description. Yeah, it isn't visible and they don't bother to click. Well, that's why Maggie Doodle, you will describe it in words and you will show that pick. I'm not saying don't show the pick. I'm saying it don't make it your one and two pick. I'm saying put make it your last picture. Make sure that you put in the description. Please check all pictures. Picture number four shows a flaw, point it out. I'm saying sandwich it. Always sandwich your items with the good, the not so good, and the excellent. So it's a nice, big, beautiful sandwich, just like we do when we, like I said, when I used to work in an autism clinic and we had to make those reports. That's the one thing our supervisors always told us. The, the parent's going to remember the first and the last thing you say. The buyer's going to remember the first and the last thing you say as well. Okay, so value your items that way. Value the way you picture them. Don't throw your items on the floor and take pictures of them on the floor and expect me to give you $25 for them. I'm not. I'm just I'm just not. I mean, unless it's a $200 Louis Vuitton scarf or something that I can authenticate from the floor, I may pick it up. But other than that, I'm really not even going to bother to look at the rest of it. Hey, Barb, how are you? <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Barb. <laughs> Oh, I love Barb. That's absolutely awesome. I got a sheepskin rug that I've been using. I was supposed to list that sheepskin rug last year, and I never I never listed it, and now I'm using it as a prop. But, yeah, you're right. On the floor with a, with a bearskin rug is perfect. You're so silly. Mmm. Barb, I mean, uh, Carla, you remember... Burt Reynolds and the, that centerfold. That was a famous centerfold, wasn't it? Here's another little necklace that popped out of that, that bag we did the other day that I forgot to show you. It seems like things get lost all the time on me. And guys, I reloaded that one with, uh, and I hope you guys don't mind that I posted it in a couple of our groups, but it's because I had to yank it. It had my personal information on the, the one where I showed the, the wonderful money clip from Tiffany and Company. I had to yank it and, and blur it out and then I put it back up. So if you guys didn't catch that video, it's um, it's back uploaded again. And I did post it in a couple of the groups. So I hope you found it. And if there's any more questions for me about anything, please let me know. That's really the only rant I had is that I keep running into these fabulous resellers that I know of. And I, I, I'm taken aback by some of their, their verbiage. They just don't laud their items. And that's what you have to do. You really, really do. Um, the pictures were one thing. Oh, and another thing is when it's so easy to, to list your item that you almost forget to add the fabric content. If you're selling a, a skirt, don't make me have to ask you if it's cotton. Is it polyester? Is it stretch? Does it have lycra in it? Is it rayon? Because if I have to ask you, chances are I'm not going to wait two days for you to answer the question. I'm just going to move on and find another skirt that I really want to stretch and, you know, not have to struggle with that button or whatever. So be sure and put that up. I know that Poshmark is super easy to get lazy because they, they don't allow, you know, they don't have to know all of that. Like eBay requires you to put the content of the fabric and whatnot. And whether it's a regular size or a plus size or a petite, but put that in for your for your buyer's convenience because yes they cannot just return it because it doesn't fit because believe me i've tried i hate this chair believe me i've tried with some shoes that were listed uh in an, an italian or european number and they didn't fit right and they really were more like a seven and a half instead of a seven and they didn't let me return them but i was very disappointed and um you know I, it wouldn't it wouldn't have happened if they would have said, well, really, it's more like a seven and a half or the same thing with clothing. If they don't know what kind of fabric content it is, don't let them have to ask you. That's really, really important. And even though, like I said, it's not in the descriptive like eBay, put it in there for them. Put them it's 100 percent cotton or, you know, the organic cottons or prima cottons, whatever it is. If it's a nice fabric, make sure you put in there 100 percent silk. Who doesn't want that? That's also really important. OK, I'm going to go back and scroll on the chat real quick. 
aroma carry and conceal purses. Oh no, I am not frugal gal, but that sounds interesting. And it sounds like it's a money maker, a carry and conceal handbag. Have you guys heard of that? I have not. Someone, Delma, it's Rebecca. This is my new channel name. Okay, well, thank you for letting us know. Vicki is here from North Carolina. I don't see any questions. If you have any questions, I'm going to go back and scroll to the top. Please put them in caps or put the question marks before and after. Okay, it looks like 19 people are watching now. I guess a lot of people are working or out and about. So the 19 or 20 people, can you all give me a thumbs up before you leave or if you didn't do it when you came back, when you came right in the door here? <laughs> Let me see. Thank you, Princess Carla. This shirt, I'm going to be listing some shirts like these. These are actually uniforms. I think I told you guys before that my sister is in the international beauty business. So she gets a lot of freebies from Chanel and Christian Dior and Lancome, I think, and some other ones. So she gave me a bunch of shirts. I'm, I have a beautiful little sweater that I wear. She actually gave me two that I wear all the time to work. But I put this one on today. It also says the, uh, the name of them. I don't know what side it's on. Forget the. Can you guys see it? It also says the name of the. I don't know if it's cosmetic color lipstick or something, but it's down here at the back. But I think it looks super cool. And then she, I've got another one that says Chanel on the back. I am going to try to list these on Posh because last time I listed these bangles, guys, from Chanel, I was able to sell them really really fast well not fast but they sold like sold like six of them in, in sets of two and then i listed a single and poshmark said i could not list anything that they could not verify as something that is sold by chanel i said well they're these are gifts you know and she's anyway then i listed them again as a set and they sold so i'm hoping that they don't yank this or anything we'll see i mean it doesn't matter if it sells it sells but i'll be listing some shirts that have the logos and stuff on Poshmark and Macari and stuff, and we'll see if they sell. Because she gave me a bunch of her old uniforms that don't fit. And they actually say uniform on the label, Chanel uniforms. So they're super cool. I like them. And this one's really nice, three quarters. Sleeve and super, uh, like a little T-shirt. Just really nice and cool. I love it. Okay, Flippin' Optimus is here. Mary is here. Mary Pelletier. I think I pronounced that right. I think I had trouble with it the last time. Ansley at Mother's Mustache is here, too. Ansley, do you do videos? I don't know if I'm subscribed to you. At Mother's Mustache there. She rokes or rocks should reflect the compliment, your item. Absolutely. I don't understand the floor thing. I really don't. Unless it's a really nice, you know, marble floor that looks really clean and and it doesn't look like it's on the floor. I, I had to do that one time, but I put it on a Persian rug and it was some jeans I did and I just... It was before, like I said, I've been on Poshmark a long time. So it was before I knew how to do the square photo. And I stood up on a, on a, like a little ladder, you know, those little utilitary ladders for the kitchen. And I took the pick like that. But that was the only reason I did it on the floor because I could not get those jeans on. And I just wasn't really good at selling, at photographing jeans. And I hate, I really don't like selling jeans. I only sell them unless, you know, if I run into a good brand and, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'll get that. But otherwise I don't really harvest jeans anywhere. Brian, the Oakbrook picker is here. Thank you for being here. And um, okay, and then I wanted to tell you also about that cabinet that they sent me. They now have put live codes on there. I am not getting an affiliate commission on that. I just want to let you know because the original code I put on there was dead. I don't know what happened. Someone said it wasn't working. I contacted the company. So they now sent me the codes. They're new and fresh. So if anybody wants to buy that cabinet for $60 because it's $100. $20. I bought me another white one for my daughter. Remember I told you guys my daughter wanted one. I bought another one today because I really love it. So you can go back and use the code if you want. Like I said, no commission, no affiliate on that. They sent me a freebie. That's my pay right there. It has been disclosed as a sponsored video. So just to clarify that. And the other video that went up as well is because it was blurry. And so that's it. Let's get started with the jewelry jar then. And let me know again if you do have any questions. Just put them in there. Or put my name in highlight. That'll be faster. Yeah, maybe highlight my name with an at in front of it. And then I'll see any questions. Okay. From the beach to the barnyard. Don't lie. 
Uh, yeah, that's true. Oh my gosh, the cat hair. The cat hair is the, the worst. I don't think I've ever, you know, I've only gotten one, one bad thing. No, there was a couple things that were not as described on Posh. One was a really fabulous pair of, uh, was it Moschino? Moschino ballet flaps. Ooh, it got a, we got a sterling right off the bat. Sterling earring, I hope we have a match. Was some ballet flaps that she said were new and they had mud on them. They had, I mean, not like really muddy, but they had like little mud inside the little, you know, the little tire marks or whatever, for lack of a better word, the little soles that look like little tires. They had like mud in there. So I contacted Posh, send them the pictures and they gave me my money back and told me to keep the shoes. So I cleaned them up. That was one thing. And then I got a skirt or a dress that was stained. I could not believe it. And the thing was, I accepted it before I even saw the stain. So that was pretty bad too. And so they gave me credit. They gave me the credit. They told me to actually redonate the dress. It was that bad. It was horrible. Uh, to read, I redonated the dress and they gave me credit to buy on shop, to shop on Posh. But yeah, the cat hair is horrible. I mean, it's just awful. Any kind. I mean, I'm not saying exaggerating. I'm not saying uh, ignore your flaws. I'm saying don't downplay your items. Don't show me a piece of jewelry and say, oh, but look, it's really faded. And, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. It looks like it was worn. I've literally seen where somebody said it was worn a lot. I mean, you don't want to, you don't need to, this is cute. You don't need to phrase it like that. You can say gentle signs of of wear or obvious signs of use. Again, I like the word use more than wear. Look at this, guys. I don't know if it's busted or what, but this is cute. Somebody said this was called cup. I really enjoy your guys' comments. Just the other day, I asked about these articulated rhinestones, and someone said they were called cup. Can you see that? These are baby pink rhinestones kind of opaque but look at that dangle there i don't know it looks like it busted i may have to just clip that off because this is pretty without this see that there's a piece missing so that's one thing that was in this jar no don't understand i don't i don't think you should undersell your items flipping optimist i think if you have a good item that's you know it's uh, they know they're buying used items you don't want to sell them a stained shirt no i'm not saying that what i'm saying is don't you don't use your verbiage like really worn but still have life in them i don't like that i think you should just say things like used pre-owned not used pre-owned channel signs of wear don't lie and say, I only used it once when you bought it at the good one. You don't know, you know, look at this little festoon number. I don't even know how to use. What is this? A hairband, a crown. I don't know. Can you guys see that? Look at that. It's got like a stretch band at the end and it's some kind of festoon thing there. Can y'all see that? And then rhinestones. See that looks like sandy came in too hi sandy how are you i don't know this is interesting because look at the back of it it's almost like somebody put a hairband thingy on it that's really strange hmm. so again guys i will take your questions if you have any put them in there highlight my name put it in caps or something so i can see it here's some little stretchy asian beaded things nothing that interesting but this is a small jar i didn't even tell you what i paid for did i i believe i paid 14. it's just a small little i wanted to open one of these though because i want to go wednesday to this store i'm going to start trying to buy more bags so i can get ready for a giveaway and I was trying to buy some last night at uh, Elizabeth's. I rarely buy the bags. I've only bought one of her bags because it gets so exciting and intense. And I've only bought one of her bags before. And it was mostly the little travel pins and tacks. Oh, there's something here. interesting here. Stuck. But I was bidding on them last night. And I think I got one. I don't even know. I think I got one. I think I may have gotten a free one. 
I'm not sure. And I know I lost the last one. I was so excited I put my name in there twice. Okay, here it goes. So it was just a small one. It's about $16. So I want to do this one. So I know that what kind of bags they're doing because they recently started doing small jars. Okay, so if they're nice, I'll go back and get another one for the giveaway. Okay, is this broken too? It is. Look, it's missing a piece. Where's my little thingy? Here it is. But it's so pretty. I think we can fix that. Oh, no, that's the earring. Oh, my goodness. This is a matching ear. <laughs> this is so funny. It's the thing about the live. You just never know what's going to happen here. Okay. We had a matching earring. That's what it was. And I hope we get the other one. That's kind of cool. I get a lot of these exotic costume, almost Asian, indo packy type stuff from this particular Goodwill. You know, Houston's interesting. It's a, it's a big sprawl, and uh, there are enclaves of different ethnic neighborhoods and ethnic shopping centers and things like that. And I don't really consider this Goodwill to be in that particular area, but it also is a pretty affluent area there. So I'm thinking maybe that's why I'm seeing a lot of this kind of stuff. Hi, Lisa B. How are you? Um, let's see. Julie Little Secrets is here too. Greta Brown, Carolyn Whitney. Yes, the bangles are awesome. I do love them. I think I'm going to stay with one. Can't decide which one. Maybe this one or the pink one. And then maybe sell the pink one. There's a real light baby pink one. Those are the only two I have left. Like I said, I've sold them all on Posh. And people are selling them a lot more expensive on eBay. They say, they say you can get more money on Posh, but I've seen people sell these for $100 a piece on Posh. And I've been, I mean, on eBay. I think these are real seed pearls. And uh, they've been getting, well, I don't know if they sell them, but they list them for $100 each on eBay. This is really pretty. It's got a barrel clasp. And it does look like, I I don't know, they're either seed pearls or moonstones. I don't know if you can see them. Let me try to get it to focus a little bit. Can you guys see that okay? Thank you for joining me, guys. It looks like 24 people are watching. We are doing a Q&A if you want to ask any questions about reselling jewelry or handbags or clothing. I do sell on Posh. I sell on Amazon, Etsy. Where else? eBay. Macari. I did, I've been selling on Macari really, really well. If you guys aren't listing your jewelry on Macari, you're missing out. I know I had a fight with them last time, but we made up. They gave me credit. And uh, I'm, I'm just now getting used to the platform because the, the the app is has a little bit of a quirk to it. I mean, like you have to put in whether you're going to pay for the label or not. And then they offer you the option of buying the label from them. So it's kind of, you know, quirky. You have to kind of work with it. But like last night, I, I made an offer for a beautiful pendant that was huge, like an inch and a half long. And it was... What did she say it was? She said it was blue topaz on 14 karat gold. And she took $40 for it. Then she canceled it and said that she didn't, for me to offer it to her on eBay because she didn't know how to do the label on there. And they were going to charge you too much for the label. And I don't know what happened. She gave me her eBay name and everything. So I may go and look her up. But that was a glitch that she ran into. She couldn't figure out the label. And she had taken a $40 offer for it. She had it like for $65. It was really pretty. Okay, here's a little boho thing, a little bracelet. That was in there too. I know there's a certain brand of these types of hippie, what I call boho hippie, necklaces and jewelry that's selling well and has a good, is a good brand name, very expensive, but I don't know what it is. I forgot. Johnny something, I believe. Okay, I showed you this, right? This is a really pretty sterling earring. I can tell off the bat that it's sterling. I hope we find the match. We shall see. Here's a pretty brooch. Ooh, this is pretty. Look at this, guys. Let's stick it on here. It has little green stones. But look, it's got a weird loop there. And it doesn't look big enough to put your glasses. Like some of these brooches are for your glasses. Can you guys see that? Is Cloisonne enable the same thing? No, it's not. Cloisonne is supposed to have gold 
cells. That's what I believe that the name cloisonne comes from the word cell. So enamel doesn't have, and I don't know if it's supposed to be a fine metal around the cell. But enamel just means pretty much painted. Whereas cloisonne is supposed to have that little edge all around it. And maybe Carla can explain a little bit more in the chat or come back and tell us about it in the comments, Carla, if you know a little bit more. This is really pretty. It does have the two gold leaves and one silver and it has those tiny, can you see those tiny little flower, those tiny little green stones in there? Sandy, do you know anything about cloisonne? To put your jewelry, Sandy, I would go to Macari. I really do because the sterling silver is selling really fast for me there. Now keep in mind that they don't want to pay a lot. They love bargains. So start high so they can take, you can take a best offer. If you really think your little earrings should garner $25, I think it might be the black that's messing this up. Let me see if I can show better like that. Then start it at 30 and take a best offer of 25 and say you'll ship it yourself because you can ship it for 350. And they don't want to have to pay six fifty to to have it, you know, or anything really for them to ship. Can you see? Okay, see that's better on the hand. I think the black is taking away the focus. Though those are pretty little stones in there, but what is that little hoop for? Or is it just? I guess maybe it's supposed to be the little stem of the leaves. I like this. I don't see a mark. Where's my magnifying? This is pretty. So yeah, I'll be going on Wednesday. I want to get some some. Jewelry jars ready for my giveaway when I hit 8,000, I hope. Look, this is broken, not fun. Not fun at all. A little broken piece of something. <sighs> Maybe it could be a tassel if I take that part off or something. I'll have to get my husband to work on that. Oh, here's a cute enamel bracelet. It says peace all over it. Yellow. No Thelma in my house. What do you mean, Barb? <laughs> oh, Barb, what did you say that you retracted? I'm sure it was nothing bad, but tell me your thoughts. Carolyn Whitney's here. Carolyn, I may put another one of these bangles that I'm wearing that I tell you my, my sister gave me. I may be putting more on Posh if I can. Like I said, they... They yanked it when I put one, but when I sold three pairs already, they said nothing. So who knows? Or maybe I'll just put the pair and then put in, because they're different colors now. I think I sold a red, and they're like three or four different shades. Something in here is really pretty, guys, but it's tangled. I'm going to undo it. Coco Thrift is in there too. Okay, here it goes. This little blue thing is pretty. And these look like genuine glass. Genuine glass. <laughs> Some kind of a stone that's really pretty. I like this a lot. It's like one of those designer things. Very long though. Bill tone. Let me know if you can see it in the black background. I may have to switch to white or something. I know you couldn't see that brooch a minute ago. Oh, this is a little better. It's really, well, you can't see the navy, but they're navy stones and gold danglies and no maker mark. What really pretty. This is something I'll put on posh. Yeah, Sandy, I would definitely look into Macari for all of your sterling silver. I wouldn't put the costume. I, I did put some ye yesterday during the challenge and I sold a vintage locket that I got from Makeup Zombie in a vintage, in a lot. She, I think one of her very first sales, she offered like five or six little pendants and two of them were, were lockets. And I sold one on Macari in like two hours after I listed it. And I think I had it for 29 and I took a best offer of 18. I just wanted to sell it. You know, I pay, I think I paid maybe $2 for it is what it wound up for by the time, you know, you'd count how many she sold me. Here's a cute ring, kind of a gold medal. I don't think it's sterling. It's actually adjustable. Kind of a gunmetal color, but it's pretty. It looks like those poison rings. You see that? Kind of 
nice and heavy at the top. Okay, is there any more questions for me? Put my highlight my name or put it in caps if you can. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up, guys. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Oh, another thing I was going to ask you is to check my about page and go subscribe to my go follow me on Instagram because I, I was so excited to hit a thousand followers on Instagram and it took forever to do it. Here's a nice silver tone, but it's just silver tone, but it does look like those sterling pieces. And uh, it keeps fluctuating between 998 and a thousand. <laughs> so, and I post sometimes some mini little clips there, videos as well. Uh, lately, I had been putting some videos that had gone awry, like the last part of my video was gone. So I was posting the, uh, the little snippets of it. Oh, your custom jewelry. Oh, okay, Sandy. Well, I would go to Etsy. I would go to Etsy and I would go to Macari as well because there are a lot of followers. There are a lot of eyes on Macari. And you do sell fine, uh, fine items there too, definitely. But I would definitely try to start a following on Etsy because that is what built that community is their handmade items. And it's supposed to be an honor system. It's supposed to be handmade items by you. And the only thing that you're supposed to sell that's not by you that's for the handmade market is supplies. You really are not supposed to get your mom's shawls that she knitted 20 years ago and try to sell those as your own. That's the way it's supposed to be. I'm not saying they don't because people do what they want. But the other community on Etsy was the the leather and silver and goldsmiths that are there because, I mean, that's, that's what built that community. It really is. And I think you garner a fabulous following. And if you start doing videos dedicated to that and hashtag it on, on Instagram as an Etsy seller, as an Etsy craftsman, I think you would do really well. And I'll help you in any way I can, Sandy. I'll spread the word on my Instagram so you guys follow and share this video as well so we can grow each other's communities. Okay, here are some white beads. This one is Napier, I believe. I think I got some like this last time. And I was telling you, yeah, I, I recognize that Napier tag already. It's just some white beads, but they're really pretty, and they're interspersed with some gold, some little gold seed beads. These are pretty. I like these. This might look pretty with my necklace. I mean, with my with my Chanel t-shirt. I love it. All right, here is Mardi Gras, plastic, busted. I have to make that lot I wanted to do though. Remember I told you last time I wanted to make a lot of the Mardi Gras beads for as fidget toys because um, I teach a lot of children with autism and I used to teach in the elementary and I was also a therapist in a clinic. And we had... This is pretty. And we had um, fidget toys, which was bags of Mardi Gras beads because the kids loved to play with them. And they would earn them after they had done their work. They would earn the right to fidget with them for about an hour. It's like a stemming, relaxing, comforting thing for them. So I'm going to start doing that. And they do sell lots. Just Google fidget toys on uh, or search it on eBay and you'll see. This is pretty. This is abalone. That is a nice disc up there. That is really, really pretty. And it's a gunmetal chain. How nice would that look? I think it's also adjustable. Yeah, because it's got an extender. So that would look so nice with a low cut dress or with a boat neck shirt up here. Wouldn't that look pretty? I like it. Yeah, that's what I would do, Sandy. The custom jewelry I would put on Etsy. I would start doing it now. Get yourself an Etsy account. It's super easy. They pay you quickly as well. Um, it's an easy app. I like Etsy a lot. The app on the phone is a little bit more difficult than the desktop for me, but it, they're always improving it too. So uh, I would definitely give that a whirl. Okay, here's just a little cheap initial. Pendant, no big deal. That I actually need to put this in the repair lot so we can use it to repair things. Well, this is kind of pretty. Strands, triple strand with a little big rhinestone there. That's kind of cute. 
Yeah, so I have been dedicating a lot of my time to the jewelry, but I love selling handbags too. And like I was talking about when you walked in, um, is how to really present your handbag. Some of you guys I've seen, not just you guys that watch me, of course not, but other people that I see, they find the most fabulous handbags. And they don't bother to put some stuff in They're looking at a picture of yourself holding the bag. Or if you have, you know, a cute little teenage daughter and she might want to do it for you, get her to do it for you. But there's nothing like it. Look at the ads in the magazines. Do you see a handbag thrown on the floor? No. You'll see somebody holding it. You'll see. I know I love the ads of the Louis Vuittons where all the girls are in the train station holding their Louis Vuittons. And, you know, they're just like holding them like they're the most precious thing ever. Well, that's the way you can hold your bag, too. It doesn't matter if it's a $20 Ross bag. Oh, here's a, a bangle with some kind of engraving in a really odd shape, sculptural shape, and I can't say, I really don't know what it says, but it doesn't really matter because it's kind of worn. It's kind of worn. See, and even if, if it's this worn, I wouldn't even wouldn't even list it. I'm just gonna put that in the crafter lot. See the Chloe. This looks like C by Chloe. Okay, this was probably on a on a bottle of perfume, it's pretty, and I would definitely play this up as designer. This is a designer name, Chloe, and it's got a pretty little heart, a big pink heart, and it says C by Chloe. I guess that's a perfume she may have put out. And people love their designer stuff, whether it's from a freebie they gave it the you know, when you bought the perfume or not, or like I said, even this shirt that's just a uniform for the uh, for the reps. Okay, here's a cute, ooh, really cute, a linked bracelet. Uh, I'm not wearing a ruby ring right now. I'm wearing a ring that I found at a thrift store for about 10 or 15 dollars um i don't know if somebody called it a fire topaz or they called it a topaz it's been a long time it's like a triangular shape i love it i got this at a thrift store here in houston a few years ago it's orange it's not quite red yeah and i've had it sized a few times because it's top heavy it still spins around as well And then this is a ring that I got from Elizabeth at Makeup Zombie. It's Jan Michaels. Never heard of it either. Had to look it up. Yeah, this is not missing any rhinestones, guys. And they're all pastel. And it has a box clasp. And I don't see a maker's mark, but it is pretty. Oh, it is missing one. <gasps> it is missing one. And it's going to be kind of difficult. Two. One here and one at the top because of those pastel shades. So what would you do, Carla? Would you try to repair it or would you save this for harvesting? Because <laughs> this is a difficult shade. Let me take it off the black. This is a difficult shade to replace. They are pastel, blue, yellow, I think even green. I don't know. But it's so pretty. What a pretty bracelet. It's got the prettiest links. It really does. Oh, in my other videos, Halo Designs. In my other video, I've showed my my ruby, my ruby ring from Tiffany and Company. Yes, that's I wore that not too long ago. I'm not selling it anymore. I was selling it for a while, and then I decided I would keep it and probably give it to my grandchild because we share the same birthstone. These are cute. These are really cute earrings. They're different. That's a piece of wood in there. See that? That's nice. Let me check the chat real quick. Can I see if there's any questions for me? You can highlight them or uh, put them in caps and so forth so I can see them. And I'm going to try to scroll back a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, they do have a little change in the program, but they don't take that long. I think Macari takes longer and Poshmark. And even then, it's only like two days. But Macari takes longer because you have to 
this is what I hate about the app. You have to rate your seller. You have to um, click on settings in order to go to your money to have it sent to your account. Then you have to wait for it to go to your account. That's the only thing I don't like about Macari, but it sells quick. So if you can just wait for those two days and the same thing with, with Poshmark, you have to wait for them to, to accept it. Hey, Kathleen, how are you, Kim Riggs? I'm so glad you're here. But I'm talking about the fact that her Sandy's work would be highly respected there at, in the Etsy community. And she could join some of those communities and join some of those uh, showcases that they have for, for people that are in her craft. And I think just by doing that, you know, she could be lauded that way and, and really showcased for what she does, for her expertise. And again, you know, we could help her get on um, on Instagram. We could spread the word that way. She could, you know, link her, her stores that way and do videos on it. And I think it would really go a long, long way because the respect that you get as a craftsman on Etsy is unsurpassed. That is what built that community. That's what I'm talking about. Greta Brown, you haven't sold is it uh, you haven't sold your jewelry on Macari? Is it genuine? They do really well when it's uh, sterling silver. Because I, I sold a costume piece last night, but it was a uh, vintage locket, and it looked it, and it was beautiful. It had like little heart shapes around the. It wasn't even round or square. It looked like a Victorian mirror. It was just beautiful. So that's kind of probably why it sold quickly. But I put about four or five other earrings that were gorgeous, and they didn't sell. I got a lot of likes, though. So, Plus, they do have a little promotion on Macari where you can – it's free. And really what you're doing – so that's why it's good to start with a little higher price. What you're doing is putting your things like at $25, and then if you promote it, it the price is lowered by, by – um, is it 10%? And then – it's it's lifted to the back to the top of the algorithm or whatever to the top of the heap there so that promotes it and then you all the likes that you get so it's good to do it after you've gotten a few likes all the likes that you get they get notified that you just reduced your price so that's one thing Macari does and it's getting lots of eyes too it's getting really really popular I think especially in jewelry designer items as well and they're finally got really strict with uh, some of the fakes because they were prolific fakes on there it was horrible horrible and obviously fake and the thing is okay so some are fake and they say they're 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 not that's that's bad enough but then there's some that oh these are you know replicas which is which is horrible because it cheapens the whole site you know Okay, okay. Yeah, definitely take into account what I said about explaining the, the flaws of your item. Sandwich. Sandwich it with the good. I always do that. Even if I have if I have a bag that's got a stain on it, I probably won't sell it. But it'll be, I mean, it depends on how big the stain is. But I'll I'll definitely picture it and I'll picture it the way it is. Don't, you know. Don't make it uh, huge, like it looks like it's bigger than it is, because the camera plays tricks on us. But do say it's it's a one-inch stain or whatever. But then, like I said, sandwich it between the good. Tell them how wonderful the bag is, how that color is so rare, how that particular style was, you know, discontinued back in 95 or something. Here's a little gold tone. I like the chain. I don't know what it's supposed to be down there. I can't tell. But I like having gold tone chains because they're rare. And I can use them for all the pretty pendants that come up. Here's a little stretch bracelet. It's actually pretty blue. That's nice. I really need to start lauding up. Oh, see, I think these are some of those. <gasps> Someone told me the names of these uh, indo packy costume type bangles because look how small they are, too. Look at the dangles. They're not missing. Someone told me these are very expensive, even in costume. Even in costume, my subscriber said that this indo packy costume type jewelry is high dollar. And I still have, I think I listed just one. But I haven't listed it on eBay, which I'd probably get more eyes on it for this type of jewelry than, than Poshmark. These are nice. See that? And there's two of them so far. 
Yeah, so she told me that uh, even costume jewelry, because it's so custom, sells well. I showed you that and that. Oh, here's a little cameo. It's cute, actually. Um, a little cameo. It's just plastic, but it's pretty, pretty color, blue and white. Can you see that? Yeah, and don't forget to size it. Yeah, let me go grab it. Okay, on my armoire or any nice door, you know, don't do it at your little shower curtain or anything. I use these little hooks. And these are great to put your handbags. Just hang them right there on an armoire, on a dresser, on the back of a nice door, and you know, put your handbag on that. Don't put it on the floor. It works. It, it just it it elevates your item to where someone is, you know, it's desirable. All right, that's the little uh, cameo. I better get going. I'm taking a little too long. Oh, this is cute. Wow, this is an earring. Okay, I thought it was part of this. Thought it was part of this but this is an earring and i'll bet the other one i think they do that on purpose i bet the other one is in the other jar well i hope it's here but wow that's definitely pretty this is all seed beads and they're all hinged can you see that against the black seems like the gold gets drowned in the black but the other ones don't that is so pretty i sure hope i find the other earring Wow, I don't know who would wear it. Probably, like I said, costume. Renaissance. Mm, I don't know, they're long. Wow, talk about shoulder duster, huh? <laughs> and the prettiest colors, too. They're, they're rust, deep green, light green, and lime green. And this is a piece of work. That would make a fabulous pendant if i don't show up with them see i thought it was a pendant to this chain right here because it was hooked on there so it would be nice as a pendant because that is pretty and everybody's doing the tassels these days see wouldn't that be nice on a nice substantial chain <laughs> we had to work with it guys when you get these jewelry jars, don't just throw everything away. Don't just dismiss everything. There's a lot of workable stuff in here. If I missed your question, you can repost it for me. But do highlight it or capitalize it so I can see it. Kim T. Durr, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Let's see. Lisa, it looks like an opal. I don't know. Someone said it was a fire topaz, or this one's a tiger's eye. Someone said this was a fire topaz. I don't know, but it is set in sterling. Oh, it was a good buy. I love it. My niece used to love it. <laughs> Denise, I've talked to you about before. She used to love this ring. All right. I don't see any other questions, but we've still got some jewelry to look at. You would wear a wet bracelet, that little, <laughs> the one that's missing the rhinestone? I've done that too. Sometimes you can't tell. They're so blingy, right? Okay, let's keep going. What is this? This is pretty too. Nice green stone, and it is long. This is pretty. It looks like a malachite, but it's just uh, plastic. I like it. A lot. It's like a bean shape too. I really love the bean shape. That's another necklace I cover. I totally cover it from Tiffany. I know I'm boring you with my Tiffany talk, but I've been like on a Tiffany kick lately. And I really want the Elsa Peretti bean. I've always loved it. Either in the either in the necklace or the or the ring. I saw the ring when I went into the store and they have it in rose gold. Look at the I've never seen it in rose gold. Look at the hooks though. Hmm, interesting. But that's pretty. I like green and gold together. It's cute. Okay. Someone else opened some of this Asian jewelry the other day. Who was it? I think it was Makeup Zombie. Well, it looks Asian. Maybe it's not. Excuse me. 
kind of floral paint painted flowers on there some pearly beads some hoops and then those long ones are the ones that are painted that's pretty it is long it's a long necklace Oh, it's close and ain't looking. I don't know if it's genuine, but it's definitely pretty. It's interesting, but it's only got two of these. The rest are silver and kind of pearly colored. There. Okay. Let me see what else we have. This is the same interesting earring that I'm gonna have to do something with because I don't think the other one's in here. What a shame. But like I said, I do have another jar from that store and I'm almost gonna call them batches, I guess, or what do they call it? Like if it's yarn or something that comes from the same or the fabric that's put out at the same time. I don't know what that technical term is, but that's the way I feel about these jewelry jars. Like you have to get as many as you can from that same trip that you went because nine times out of 10, that stuff, is going to be mixed up into two jars. This is a pretty chain. Let's see how it goes though. Okay, it's double strand. Here it is, and some charms on there. And it says blessed. This is pretty. It says blessed on it. It's got a really pretty chain. Don't know what they call this chain. But it's pretty. A little blue, I mean, a little red bead. And the gold charm says blessed on it. Can you see that? That's pretty. I love the chain. Let me hold the chain because you can't see gold on this background. Thank you, Cam. I appreciate you being here. Guys, I hope you take the time to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to do so before you leave if you didn't do it when you walked in the door. I really appreciate it. And if you can, share the video in your in your social circles. Okay, I'm not sure. This might be a prayer bead. It does look like it could be. It feels plasticky, so I don't know if it's amber or plastic or whatever because amber feels like plastic to me. But look how short it is. This is not, this is not an, a piece of jewelry, I don't think. And then it's got two big, bigger beads here at the, on the side. And it's not stretchy. What do you think? Oops, I think that could be amber. I don't know. That's one thing I found really interesting. I never really paid attention to amber, but it's, it feels like plastic. It's crazy. Let me see. Any other questions? Highlight my name if you have any questions. I know I just came on with advice, but if you have any questions, let me know. Like I said, I'm going to try to make this um, a live Q&A instead of the other kind because it, I wasn't getting the, um, the production that I wanted to have for it. I'll get a couple of questions, and I had to go back and look for them. Then I got a lot of questions on other videos. So if you want, you can think of your questions, and I will come back next time, and I'll title it Q&A. And that way you can be ready with a question. These are pretty. These are multi-strand with a barrel clasp. I don't know why they put it on a stretch, though. No, it's stretchy, actually. So, but I'm still, yeah. But they're nice and tacked. Nice color, too. So I will play of those merits. And uh, I'll mention that it's stretch as well. But I'll end it with a nice thing about the beautiful blue color and the glass beads. They are glass. So that's really nice. All right, not too bad of a jar, guys. Again, it was, oh, it was actually cheaper. No, it's $15.99. Yeah, it's $15.99, so I get them for about $16 with a discount. Not a bad jar. I got to go on, on Wednesday. I haven't been there in a week or two. About two weeks I haven't been in that store. This is uh, Chico's. This one says Chico's. It's pretty. Double strand discs. 
no triple. Wait a second. Yeah, it's a it's a double long too. It's pretty. They almost look like mother of pearl, but they're not. Uh, they're gold. They're they're the multi metal colors, the mixed metal colors. So you'll have the bronze. Oops, put it back. <laughs> put it backwards. Sorry, guys. There it is. There it is. Can you see? I don't know what they call it when it looks like they're attached sideways like that. There it is. It's pretty. Chico's. I like it. It's nice and heavy, too. Looks like it's well made. All right, here's another antique looking one. Ooh, that's interesting. Look, Festoon. You might be able to see this on the. In the black, I don't know, maybe not. But it's like an antiqued metal. Can you see it? Oh, you can't see it on there very well. Huh? See it better this way. It has like little coins, some kind of discs hanging on it. That's interesting. That may sell. Here's some pearls that are very nice and weighty. They have a nice clasp. Doesn't look like silver. And these, actually, they're more like a silver bead, but they do have a little pearl essence, pearl esque to them. Pearl essence, is that what it's called? color to them they really do they almost have a tahitian color but then they look more silvery than that greenish tinge and then they have tiny little beads in them in them interspersed in between the others very nice and heavy no maker's mark on it though but that's pretty that's really nice and then here's another this looks like a vintage piece i don't think these are real pearls but they're pretty they're really small has a gold barrel clasp, triple strand. That's pretty. I think I heard uh, Angie talking about pearls in her video last time. Do you guys have much luck with pearls? I, I do. I, I do well with them. Uh, but I really don't list as many as I should because, like, I have this huge bag right here that I was going to do on, at the auction, and it has all kinds of pearls. Let me throw that in there, too. It has all kinds of pearls, and I was basically building a lot here. See, like these little costume pearls? And I see them all the time, so they are trending. And then I have this little stretch one, and then I've seen them in Stella and Dot. They have some really trendy pieces like this. So I really need to start... Um, start listing them more and I think older ladies love them yes but young girls do too I've seen them and I've seen them in the magazines what, what do you guys think about pearls do you like them 14k hey Susan Bishop how are you hi Vanessa thank you for being here I do not have Poshmark, but I see something on there I want. Could I still purchase from you by letting you know? Yeah, sure, Kim, you can. If you see something on there, uh, even on eBay, as long as it doesn't have a bid, you know, I wouldn't pull it down. But um, if you see something on Poshmark that you like and you don't want to, I can give it to you cheaper, actually, because I don't have to pay the commissions. So just let me know and I'll pull it down. Uh, and anything, really, that you see in the halls. Because you guys didn't answer my question about the pearls. Do y'all like to sell pearls? Do you like to wear pearls? What's going on with pearls? Yeah, I was going to do this lot at the auction, but I forgot. I got, the time was got, you know, at the, the benefit auction that we had for Rolling Picker, and we kind of ran out of time, and, you know, I wanted other people to come in, and so forth and so on. Okay. So, Vanessa, you do pearls? You wear them all the time? Yes, I love them, too. And I love all of the lengths. 
all of the different lengths, the choker length. Um, I think the other one is princess. Oh, look, this is, this looks like James Avery. James Avery puts out a plain little bangle like this. I'm going to check because it's really rusted or tarnished rather like Sterling is. And this is like one of their introductory pieces. <laughs> they sell these for about $60, I think which is good to have because you can put charms on it, but I don't know if it is. I'll have to really look at it with my loop. But I tell you what I'm going to do. I might, did anybody answer my question? Kim, full pearls are real. Either, what, either one, do you sell them? Do you wear them? Does anybody know what they call the long length? What is the long length of the, of the pearls? Because they they come in different lengths for for those of us who sell them, right? For those of us who sell them, we have to know the lengths. Okay, I can't find it, but this really looks like a James Avery to me. But first, I'm going to. But it looks a little bit misshapen. I don't know. I'll have to look at it a little bit closer because it's so plain. I mean, who would copy that, right? So they usually sell these to put your charms in, and I know like a lot of girls get them for graduation, and they'll put like the first little diploma charm or something on it because they're really inexpensive as a first pearls are very feminine yes they are does anybody know what they call the uh the long length of the pearl i know that the, of the pearl strands i know that they're called uh choker and princess there's another length oh i love this one this one's actually interesting it really is i think i'm gonna put that up for sale and I think this is the last, but I always wind up with something I didn't see. This looks like sterling, guys. It's, I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know, because it looks like liquid silver. It's really tangled. But look, it's got these little pave balls of rhinestones, which just doesn't look to me like it belongs with, with liquid silver. But you never know. You just never know. It's not liquid silver. No. No, it's like a... a like a little wire it's pretty maybe i could polish it though or maybe it's supposed to look like that maybe it looks good like that you know like a gunmetal color okay so did anybody opera length susan bishop said opera length mary said opera length and i think mary was the first one to answer opera so mary i'm going to send you this bag it's just a impromptu giveaway i'm going to send you this bag that i had fixed up to auction off at the benefit for Rolling Picker. I just thought I would do that because you know, when I hit a million views on on YouTube, and it took me a long time to get to a million views, but when I did it, I could think, oh, when I hit a million views, I'm gonna do a giveaway for that. So it's gonna be a while before I hit the 200 more than I need to hit 8,000 to do a giveaway, which is usually a, a surprise mystery jewelry bag. I'm going to um, I usually do a jewelry bag giveaway. But I ran into this today today, and I said, you know what? I never told myself I never gave away the million, million views giveaway that I wanted to do. Because I remember waiting and waiting for that, you know, the little ticker at the top that tells you how many views you've had. And I've been on here for five years, so it took a while. And I think I hit it about maybe a year ago or maybe six months ago. So I'm, I don't remember now. But I'm going to give it away to you, Mary, because you were the first one to answer the correct answer opera length. So will you do me a favor and email me? at Thelma Hordes, that's as in hoarding, thelmahordes at gmail.com. I'll post it in the description when I go up. And let me have your address and I'll let you have that. I think that would be really fun to look through. It's got all pearls, uh, faux pearls, and just really, really pretty things. And I may even put a, a little pair of genuine pearls in there just for fun, all right? I think you'll enjoy that. And guys, I want to thank you for being here. Please give me a thumbs up before you leave. Don't forget to share the video with your social circles. If you have any, come back real soon and see me. I'm going to do a Poshmark sales video because I've been letting that one go to the wayside. Uh, and it's been kicking up for me. And I want, to see the, I want you to see the kinds of things that I sell on Poshmark and uh, how well it's doing. It really has kicked up for me. And uh, I'm really happy with that result. And as well with eBay is... Uh, it's doing good too. I mean, I've sold the craziest things on eBay, like everybody does. I think I sold a carrot, I mean, a talking parrot 
was the last thing I sold on eBay, some cups and things like that. But I love sharing the fashion aspects that I do here. So I hope you enjoy that, Mary. Please be sure and email me your address, and I'll ship that out to you tomorrow. And I'll talk to you guys really soon. Come back and see another video. Hit the bell. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. You guys have a wonderful, what is this, Monday? Have a wonderful rest of the week, all right? And I'll see you soon. And you're quite welcome. Mm -hmm.